So hi guys, let's make a group frequency distribution table. Now a group frequency distribution table, um, it will start with knowing the class, the class width. Now in psychological statistics, we normally don't use the logarithm method. What we do is we are more familiar if the class width is 5, 10, maybe 20 maybe per 25, per 100. So it actually depends on that. Now, for this type of data, it's better to use a group frequency distribution table. Now, I will decide that I will use a class width of 5. What do you mean by that? It means for this type of data, the first one that you should get is the minimum. Get the minimum values and the maximum. Then you decide what class width should you follow. Um, for my, for my, uh -huh. then you decide. For my reference, in psychological statistics, we normally use a class width of 5, of 10, and you're very familiar with this, the 5, 10, 20 class width. And what do you mean by that? I'll use class width of 5. It means if I will start with 6, because this is the minimum, I can select 5 if I want to. 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I have 9 here. The class width of five, it, it's the class width of five represents how many numbers inside the width. So if I select five, that is five, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But if I select six, that would be six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That would be ten. So it actually depends on you. I'll just use this. If it, this is 11, then that would be 15. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, a class width of 5. If this is um, 16, this will be 20. And this is 21, this will be 25. Now, observe this. You will see that Everything here is represented by all of this. Okay. But since 20 is already covered here, there's no need to use 21 and 25 because 20, this is already the maximum. Okay. Or I can use 5. If I use 5, if I use 5 as my lower bound, I will have 5 until 9. I will have 10. I will have 14. This will be 15. And this will be 19. This will be 20. And this will be 24. That's also possible. Let's, do, let's use this one. Now, to get the midpoint, the midpoint is the average of the two. That's the midpoint. Again, I don't know. To get the midpoint, it's the average of the upper and lower bound. So that means you just average them. This two. Or you can use the formula. You sum the two, you sum the two, parenthesis, divided by two, the formula of average. Or you can use the word average. Or you can copy it from your last formula and drag it down. Now, the lower bound is this one, minus 0 0.5. So for the lower bound, you just minus 0 0.25. Again, all the lower bound is minus 0 0.25 of this one. Again, 
that would be 10 minus 0.5 that would be 15 minus 0.5 or simply if you have that you just copy and drag it down you can copy that well the upper bound is the addition of 0 0.5 it's the opposite of this opposite of this one this is minus 0 0.5 this is plus 0 0.5 you can do that manually if you want to. Or you can just drag this down and you will have all of that. Now for the frequency, what you can do is you actually count. That's something that we have to do. What are the numbers? How many numbers are between 5 and 9? Let's try this. We have 11. Um, for 10 to 14, <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 13, 14. Next. Um, between 15 and 19, 4, this is 4, and this is 1, a total of 30, which is a confirmation of the total number of elements in our data set. So for the cumulative, we just, this one, copy this one. For the second one, you copy this plus the second one. Again, you copy the upper part plus that side. Or you can just drag it down. You're, you will know if you're doing it right if all of these are 30. Now, cumulative, please remember, cumulative is the sum. 25 is the sum of these two. 29 is the sum of everything here. 30 is the sum from first to the last frequency. So how about the graph? Normally here, we use the graph, we use the histogram. Okay. Now I will use add in in Excel. So we have here data. We have here data, click data, go to data analysis. Data analysis is somewhere here. And then you will have this pop-up. Now in this pop-up, click histogram and click OK. Now the input range that you want um, to be observed is all of this. Please don't include the, the, the word, just the numbers, these numbers. The bin range will always be, again, the bin range will always be the upper bound, this one. Again, the bin range is always the upper bound. Okay, and then I will click output range. The output range is where they will put the graph. So here, I want you to put the graph somewhere here. Okay, and now we'll click chart output. Chart output, and then, okay. And I have here the histogram. Okay, and then of course, don't forget the, to change the chart. As you can see, this is, the same and that's it thank you